Hi guys, welcome back to another video. If you're new to this channel, my name is Christian Koyuma and I'm a Swedish watercolor artist. In today's video, we're going to talk about brushes and uh, not any brushes. We're going to talk about my personal top five brushes. Uh, but I want to add it's my current top five brushes. Because the thing is that it's not uh, that unusual that your favorite brushes changes over time depending on where you are at in your development or maybe what kind of motifs you're painting at this point. Before we dig into my favorite brushes, I want to mention two criteria that I think uh, a lot of watercolor artists out there uh, use to make, decide if a brush is good or not for watercolor. Uh, and number one is uh, the ability to hold water. And this is something that uh, more expensive brushes normally are pretty good at. And the second one is uh, to maintain shape, because some brushes, they're horrible at maintaining shape after they get wet, or over time they even change. So uh, all of these brushes, I think, are pretty good at holding water and maintaining shape. And I also want to add that none of these brushes are that expensive. Uh, compared to some other pricier alternatives out there. Okay, let's get started with the, my first brush that I want to talk about. Okay, let's start with the, the first brush, and this is the brush that I use in pretty much every painting I do. Uh, this kind of brush is called a rigger, and the brand is Windsor & Newton uh, Gold Spectre 2, and the size is zero, and this is a really good brush for making fine details, but I also like to use it for creating different textures. And this is a quite a cheap brush. So this is, I would say this is a brush that anyone can afford if you can afford paints and paper and so on. So this is a, a strong contender for number one, in my opinion. Okay, the second brush, uh, this is a, a round brush. Uh, and the round brush is, uh, very practical for doing pretty much anything, but especially maintaining control when you're painting and doing different kind of shapes. Uh, the brand of this brush is an Escoda uh, Perla, and the size is 24 or 22. Um, and I got this a few years back and uh, I really love this one. Um, you can do so much with it, pretty much anything. I can almost say that if you can only afford to buy one single brush, this is the brush you should get. It's a, it's a fantastic brush and now when I've been having it for a while, I don't think I could go without it. So Escoda Perla, round brush. And the next brush, this is uh, called a Hake brush and uh, the brand is Creator Studio and the size is 24, I think. Uh, and this is a brush that I like to use when I do bigger watercolors. Because uh, when you're doing bigger watercolors, uh, you want to make sure that you can paint big areas fast so it doesn't dry. And uh, I think this brush does the job perfectly. Also, I like this brush for doing graded washes as well. This is something that flat brushes in general, in my opinion, are good for. So Creator Studio, uh, the Hake brush. And the next brush I want to talk about is uh, this brush. It's a round brush and this brush is one of the first brushes that I actually bought. And it was uh, quite cheap as well. Uh, the brand is called Royal Langnickel. And uh, as you can see, it's a round brush. And uh, the reason why I like this one already from the beginning when I was a beginner was the hairs are kind of stiff. And I think that's a really good thing if you want to maintain control when you're doing different sh shapes or smaller shapes. Because uh, uh, some of the more expensive ones that can hold a lot of water, sometimes, in my opinion, the hair is a little bit too loose. So then it's hard to maintain control for doing some shapes. So this brush, I use it still today. And especially if I want to paint something that's a little trickier and where I need a lot of control, like a, a focal point, for example, in a painting. Royal Langnickel. And the last brush I want to show you is uh, the Escoda Versatile. 
uh, it's a flat brush with synthetic hair and uh, I like to use this one especially for painting sharp edges or doing graded washes. It's uh, pretty much the same reasons as the Hake brush but it's a little bit smaller which is great for smaller details or even smaller paintings. And before I say goodbye I want to share those miniature watercolors that some of you guys sent to me. Since uh, my previous video was a little bit of a challenge where uh, I was painting a small watercolor and I asked for you guys if you wanted to to paint one as well and, and send them to me. And uh, some of you guys did and I really appreciate it. Thank you. So these are the wonderful watercolors that I got. Okay, until I see you next time, bye bye. Thank you.